Um, I'm going to continue the tradition that we've had over the years, whether it's sous vide cooking, um, open source electric water jets, of saying that we cover open source hardware as well as software, and open source hardware doesn't have to be electronics. And the issue I have is I, on account of my vast age, get an old and decrepit neck. So I need, when I have a multiple screen system, for those screens to be at the right height. And the second screen is invariably my laptop. And I need a stand for my laptop that will put the screen quite high up against me. Now, I'm very fortunate. I've got a ThinkPad. And the nice thing about a ThinkPad is you can open it up virtually completely flat. So, so far, so good. But the trouble is, I've also got a 32-inch main screen that sits quite high up so I can see it. And I've got a wonderful, I can buy a little stand like this one and my assistant will just carry it up forward. It's a great little thing for, um, uh, you know, for putting your laptop on, but it only gives you about 30 degrees of elevation, and it is still down at, at laptop level. So what I wanted to do was to create my own laptop stand, and it's rather big to 3D print, and I want some structure. So I'm a keyboard worker, so I thought I'd make it out of wood. And I'm also something quite keen on saving the environment. So here's my source wood, some old pallets and an old packing case. And there's all the parts that make up my laptop sand. And we've got our base and something to prop the laptop up and a bit to lift it up, some boards to lift it up and some nuts and bolts and screws and so forth. So here's how you start off the rough wood. I'm very fortunate I've got an electric planer which makes taking some rough pallet wood and do you do have to make sure you take nails out because they don't often make a mess of a high speed uh, playing blade but I can very quickly get the boards flat and squared off and actually I'm getting to the right thickness very easily because I've got a band saw and that's beautiful I just set it to the width and then play the board so I very quickly get the boards down to size um, from the pallet you still have to finish them off with hand tools uh, generally a, um, a jointed plane just to bring them flat and there's a little ledge at the bottom for that. I needed a rebate plane, and I've got an old-fashioned rebate plane. If you've got a router, you could use a router for that. Some of you may notice in the picture on the left, one of the problems of using wood from old pallets is you end up with rusty nail holes in it. So I do want these things to look decent. So, oh, oh, so we'll come back to that in a minute. And there's the side of a packing case, and my band saw is used just to saw the nails off that. I can get a big enough piece out of sawing the rough nail holes off the edge. But for my big bit with the nail holes, I have to deal with it. And for that, a drill and plug set is here. So I've got a drill and a matching plug. Here's the drill drilling out where the nail holes are. So I get some nice clean holes. And then I've got a plug cutter, which I can put in my drill press. And it cuts a little matching plug. And I can snap those off. And then put in some glue, hammer them in, let it dry, play it smooth. And my nasty nail holes are now gone away. And if I'd taken a bit more care when I was putting these slides together, I'd have lined those up properly so the grain on the side and then disappear completely. And the audience here, being handy, can actually see there's an example of this later. Um, and the other tool I needed was I've got a scroll score. You could use a hand vessel because you may have noticed there are some rounded ends on some of the bits, and that's very good for just rounding the ends off. So Here's how it starts. I've got a base. I've got to have a base to lift the stand up so it's high enough. And on top of that, I've got a couple of supports. They're going to have some struts in to support the back plate to hold up the laptop. So I put place those in position, turn it upside down, and screw them in. Then here's the bit to elevate it, two sides and a back, and I put some holes in the back to allow the um, stand to go on. And there's actually the side bits have some screw holes at the bottom to connect the back to the sides. And then on top of that, I put the baseboard that I've just done, put screws all the way around. Um, I didn't think about this too carefully. One of the screws is quite close to one of the supports, so I had to have quite a long extension on my electric drill. And that's the base. And then at the end on the left, I can put the screw in to tie the sides to the back. And then I want to put hinges on the front against which I'm going to hinge the back plate to hold up the uh, laptop. Um, the, the base is only a thin piece of hardboard, a thin piece of plywood, so I need to clamp another strip underneath that the screws can go into 
to give enough depth for the screws. And so there we are, I've got a baseboard um, that is 70 centimeters up, that's high enough to lift up my laptop. And then here's the back to the laptop. Now, what I've got on there is a couple of slotted pieces that I'm going to put a strut into, and I've got it slotted so I can slide things up and down to give me a different angle. So I put them into position, turn it over, screw, put screws in there, slightly shorter screws so I don't go through to the slot. And then that's what it looks like. I've got a little angle bit to be a ledge, that's why I've used the rebate claim for. So I've got to screw that onto that, so line it up, turn it over, a few props to hold it level because it sticks up to the bottom, and screw it in. And now I've got my front thing to hold the laptop, my stand back face I made earlier, and I can line the two up, carefully prop the heights together, connect the hinges together, and lo and behold, I have my laptop. But it just flops back on its hinges, and that's the only angle it goes to. And that's why we have those little support blocks, because I can put a bolt in um, the bottom ones, and onto that I attach uh, my um, uh, little struts and little struts. Those are the road rounded ends you saw from the band saw uh, from the scroll saw earlier. I put nuts and bolts on the end, and that. Um, uh, then for the top end, I've got another bolt, of course it slides up and down the slot, it's got a wing nut for ease of adjustment, and I can slide those up and down to give me a range of angles. And there is a finished uh, laptop stand, and my glamorous assistant can show you, here is the real one. If we just put it down here, as you can see, my laptop will happily sit on it, and I can just angle it up, and then I've got a nice high screen. And here it is. Um, I thought I'd take a picture of um, uh, of it in use. So here it is in my uh, bedroom with my slightly smaller screen. I was going to put this up as my final slide, except, of course, the one thing you should do is make sure you've got something appropriate on the screen. And if you look carefully, there appears to be a, a naked lady in my screensaver. Um, I have, I, so this is not pornography. I was listening to a recording of Bizet's Carmen on Spotify. Spotify puts up the album cover um, as the uh, screensaver, and this particular one, uh, the designers of thought putting a naked woman on the cover would sell more CDs. So um, I thought that was, so I've actually taken a, a new picture, um, making, care, making sure that there is nothing embarrassing on the screen. And this is my work setup. And um, there you have my work setup. So that, that's what I work from all the time. Um, so um, thank you uh, very much. Um, that's my contribution to open source. And it is open source. Um, uh, there is the um, a link to GitHub. Um, on that uh, GitHub repository, there's a sub, sub directory called Laptop Stand. Um, all the pieces of wood are actually done as open SCAD files, and I've got them as STL. Um, uh, and uh, uh, and um, uh, um, we take it. And um, so I welcome corrections and errors. Um, um, I actually made the laptop stand and then said I'd do the talk, so I've had to dismantle it all, draw all the pieces, and I may have made a mistake. Um, yeah, and it's true that it's not quite as fancy here. I have actually made three of these. Um, <clears throat> this is my work one, the previous was my home one, and this is um, my one for showing off to the PCS Open Source Specialist Group. Um, all three are slightly different, um, but that's a great thing. You can modify them as needed. My one at home is on a very small table. It has an extra strut in the middle, and it, you couldn't see, but behind it was a G clamp. Clamping was a desk, so the whole thing didn't fall off. Um, so while we get Andy's slides up, I'm very happy to take any questions or receive any comments. So thank you very much. Uh, how did you design it? It was also an open schedule, was it on the back of an I designed it on the back of an envelope. I did some rough calculations to work out message, and 
as is the case, when you have all this wood lying around the big tools, you don't worry so much when you cut, cut the old piece the wrong length. So uh, there was a bit of trial and error and it didn't look quite good and this is where we ended up. Um, and it was mostly stuff I had in the workshop. It is not quite all wood from the um, uh, from scrap because I had a piece of thinner plywood which I used as a laptop back, it's a bit lighter, lying around for another project. But I could have just used the scrap wood for that. And clearly I didn't make the screws from scratch and I paid for some nice brass bolts. Did you finish it? Or is it just raw? It's raw wood. Um, I quite like bare wood. I just like the tactile feel of it. Um, if I was serious, I would varnish it. If I was serious, I would also glue it. Um, but I quite like stuff I can change my mind about, take apart, and do it a different way. Okay, good.